primary goals when I'm creating electronic sounds is to find the sweet spot between far out synthetic tones and organic realism where the listener has no idea how the sound was made. I think of this as the so-called uncanny valley. This has led me to an approach called analog acoustic modeling, using analog synthesizers for their inherent richness and organic qualities to do modeling of acoustic instruments. The goal is not to sound exactly like an acoustic instrument, but to evoke the qualities of one. I think there's still a huge amount of uncharted sonic territory to explore using vintage analog synthesizer technology from the 70s. Through my research, I became interested in an obscure German wind synth from 1975 called the Variophon, which is a predecessor of the Iwi that I play. The interesting part to me about the Variophon was that it used fixed width pulse waves to approximate the pressure pulses generated by double reed instruments. This technique gives a unique spectra with gaps, something similar to a formant filter. This is a waveform you can't get from a standard analog oscillator without some clever patching. When I read that someone else had taken interest in this technique and was selling Eurorack module kits, I knew I had to try them out. Rico was kind enough to send me a few of his kits to try out. The blip comes as a PCB panel set, so I sourced my own parts online and got to building. All the documentation is on the Fricko website. The build was easy and took me about three hours to complete. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of installing a couple of 1K resistors instead of one meg ohm due to the product being mislabeled. A good lesson to always check parts with a multimeter before building. So here we have the Fricko Blip. It's a wave shaper that works on square waves and modifies their breadth or pulse width. In a normal square wave, when you change the pitch, the proportion of the two halves of the wave remain constant, 50% of each other. Whereas on the Fricko blip, that pulse width remains fixed, independent of frequency, as set by the width knob. This is closer to the behavior of an acoustic instrument, like a double reed instrument, an oboe, a bassoon, brass instruments, and also instruments with multiple pickups like bass, clavinet. They'll all produce waveforms like this where the pulse width is uh, independent of the frequency. So kind of the higher you go, the closer it's going to be to a pure square wave and the lower you go, it's going to be more like a thin, thin pulse wave. Then we've got the bass knob on the blip, which allows us to crossfade with a low-pass filtered version of the pulse output. This can be useful in restoring fundamental and bass to some patches. And we've got the shark tooth out. This allows us to do something like PWM but with triangle waves. By modifying the tooth output, we can change the breakpoint at which this uh, triangle like wave reverses itself. And again, the breadth of these triangular pulses is not frequency dependent, it's fixed. Think of an envelope generator but being driven at audio rates. In fact you can use an envelope generator to do the same thing and I've done that for a very long time but I'm excited to have now a module that's dedicated for this use so I can free up my envelope generators to do envelope things. So the way I think of this process is 
when trying to patch an acoustic instrument, I just want to add as much non-linearity as possible, as much um, as many formants as possible as I can layer into that. Because uh, you know, in an acoustic instrument, everything is contributing a formant from the the type of reed, the type of uh, mouthpiece, the the length of the horn, the material that it's made of, all these things. So um, I see the the blip is contributing one important part, which is the the oscillator shape. But um, let me show you now how I would turn this into a musical patch. So rather than having this droning, I'm going to run the blip into a VCA. And that VCA will be controlled by the CV generated by my EWI or wind controller's breath sensor. Let me patch the pitch of my MIDI to CV controller into my oscillator. So it still sounds a lot like a square wave or a pulse wave. Let's see what happens when we add a filter into the mix. We're going to use my homemade Oberheim SEM filter clone and take the high pass filter out. I'm going to take the pulse, I mean the uh, high pass out into my VCA. starting to sound pretty bassoony. So this is what I'm talking about layering formants. We have the formant from the blip and now we have a formant created by this high pass filter and we're gonna add even more formants by using the triple wave folder. So I'm going to go out of the high pass into my triple wave folder and into my VCA. It's starting to sound pretty cello-like. we can push it into more tenor sax territory by messing with this wave folder.
Let's try the shark out. So hear how different notes in the range have very different timbres. That's what I really like about this thing. It's making my patch more like an acoustic instrument, like a typical synthesizer patch. Um, you know, things are very linear and, and even, and uh, every note kind of sounds consistent. And I want to make it so that my patch has certain ranges, just like on a saxophone or on a cello, certain notes will jump out almost like wolf tones and other notes will be kind of muffled and it's hard to make them sound good. And I want that same experience when playing Iwi on the modular. That way uh, the patch can kind of inspire me and dictate what notes I play based on what sounds good. So uh, this is getting us in that territory now. Pretty damn good cello now, all it needs is some reverb. Oh yeah, let's add some modulation now. I'm gonna bring my breath CV again. Um, let's go into my mutable shades, offset and attenuator. And I'm going to go from there into the modulation input. So now I can modulate the width of the wave with my breath. <laughs> 